Dear colleagues, dear guests, we must make a technical break first. Today is the 27th of May 2021. It's 3 p.m. Moscow time. We are beginning the session of the Dissertation Council for the Defense of the Dissertation by Tsulu. The dissertation is submitted in conformity with requirements for the academic degree of the candidate of philology. The topic of the dissertation is Chinese culture assimilation and its reflection in the poetry of Russian Far Eastern immigration, 1920s, 1950s. Under the order issued by St. Petersburg State University on the 11th of March, 2021, number 1716-1, I, Andrei Stepanov, Doctor of Philology, Professor of St. Petersburg State University, have been appointed the chairperson of the dissertation board. And unfortunately, we must have a technical break right now. That's the end of the technical break number one. Uh, 
some of the members of the dissertation board are attending this session uh, via video conferencing system. They are Professor Lubov Bugaeva, Doctor of Philology, Associate Professor of St. Petersburg State University. Uh, can you hear and see us? Yes, I can see you and I can hear you. The answer is positive. Professor Natalia Grekalova, Doctor of Philology, Institute of Russian Literature of the Russian Academy of Science. Can you hear us and see us? Yes, I can hear you and see you. The answer is positive. Professor Konstantin Barsht, Doctor of Philology, Institute of Russian Literature of the Russian Academy of Science. Can you hear us and see us? Uh, switch on the microphone, please. Professor Barsh, please switch on your microphone. Yes, I can hear you and I can see you. The answer is positive. Dr. Luli Fein, Doctor of Philology, Professor of Guangdong University of Foreign Studies, China. Professor Lulufin, uh, can you hear us and see us? Yes, I can see you and I can hear you. The answer is positive. Uh, the degree seeker Tsulu is also attending uh, uh, the session via conferencing system. Can you hear us and see us? Yes, the answer is positive. The degree seeker Tsulu Sulu is attending this session by a conferencing system. I would like to vote on the issue of the remote participation by the degree seeker. Do you think that we can continue the session of the dissertation board while the degree seeker is attending this session uh, re remotely? Yes, it's possible. Your opinion? Yes, it's possible. Professor Barsht, what do you think? I think it's possible. Professor Lulufin, do you. What's your opinion? Can we continue the session of the dissertation board? Can we continue the session of the dissertation board? Yes, yes, of course, yes, of course. And I also think it's possible to continue this session of the dissertation board, taking into, into account the members of the, the opinions of the members of the dissertation board. I would like to say that we are going to continue the session of the dissertation board since the decision has been taken unanimously. The research advisor, Professor Svetlana Titarenko, Doctor of Philology, Professor of St. Petersburg State University is also here. I would like to ask the members of the dissertation board who are attending the session via video conference system to switch off their microphones. Please make sure that your microphone is switched on when you are giving the floor. I would like to say that the dissertation, the session of the dissertation council is being recorded and broadcast on St. Petersburg State University web site and is being interpreted into English. During the session of the dissertation board, you can ask questions and make co comments using the email address that you can find on the official web page. This will allow you to participate in the academic discussion the technical personnel will refer the questions to me and I will read them out during the discussion. The questions are supposed to be relevant to the contents of the dissertation. The authors of the questions are to write down their name, position and workplace. The questions that are not relevant to the dissertation will not be read out and questions which are sent anonymously will not be read out either under the order on the procedure of granting academic degrees of, at St. Petersburg State University, issued by St. Petersburg State University, 
the session of the dissertation council is duly constituted provided at least two-thirds of the members of the dissertation council are present the total number is not to be fewer than four people the dissertation board consists of five people five of which are present including four people who are participating in this session via video conferencing system therefore we have a quorum the agenda is as follows it will last for about two hours number one the chairman's presentation about the documents submitted by the degree seeker and their conformity with the requirements the chairman's reply to the questions if any number two the presentation given by the academic degree seeker to provide an overview and findings of the research number three questions to the academic degree seeker about the presentation number four questions and answers about the presentation number five reviews of the dissertation the council members will be taking the floor in turns number six the chairman's review of the dissertation number seven comments about the reviews and answers to the questions unfortunately we need another technical break That is the end of technical break number two. Number seven, comments about the reviews to, to the questions posed by the members of the dissertation board. Number eight, open discussion. The floor will be given to the members of the audience. They can give a brief account of their ideas and or ask questions about the research. No more than five minutes per person. 
It is necessary to fill in the registration form and give their full name before the talk. Number nine. The chairperson will read out the questions received via email. I would like to say that if the questions are too long, then they will not be read out. Number 10, answers of the degree seeker. Number 11, presentation of the research advisor. Number 12, deliberations of the members of the dissertation council before an open balloting on conferring or non-conferring the academic degree. This will not be broadcast. Number 13, open balloting and vote counting and recording the results in the protocol. Number 14, making a decision on whether to confer or not to confer the academic degree. And 15, closing speech of the degree seeker. Before we proceed with the agenda, I would like to ask you if you have any questions about the agenda. I have a question. What is the registration for? Where do we send the questions? The registration form is for those who are attending this session. Where do we write questions? Through the chat. Do we use the chat for, for the questions? You can ask questions in person. The chat and other means of communication are for those who are not attending the session of the dissertation board. Since there are no questions, I would like to proceed with the agenda. I would like to ask you to put your telephones on the silent mode but don't switch them off so that we can contact you should a technical glitch occur. A short presentation by the chairman of the, the, of the dissertation board. The dissertation is submitted in conformity with the requirements for the academic degree of the candidate of philology. The, Scientific speciality is 100101 Russian literature, Chinese cultural assimilation and its reflection in the poetry of Russian Far Eastern emigration through 1920s, 1950s. The dissertation was approved for the defense of the order by the order of the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg State University. The dissertation was completed in St. Petersburg State University. The research advisor is Doctor of Philology. Professor of the Department of History of the Russian Literature of St. Petersburg State University, Professor Svetlana Tidarenko. The degree seeker has published three papers. Uh, they were published in peer reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education and Science. The degree seeker has submitted a full set of documents to the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg State University. The documents are in compliance with Section 3 of the order. The documents are stored in the dossier. The representative of the Department for Dissertation Council Management has the copies of the documents. Before giving the floor to the academic degree seek, I would like to ask the members of the dissertation board if they have any questions and if it is necessary to read out the list of documents submitted to the academic degree. 
Do you have any questions or do you think I should read out the list of documents? No, I don't have any questions. I don't think you should read out the list of documents. Professor Gryakalogva, do you have any questions or do you think I should read out the list of documents? Unfortunately, we cannot hear you. I'm sorry, I didn't switch on the microphone. I don't have any questions. And I don't think it's necessary to read out the list of documents. Professor Barsht, do you have any questions? And do you think I should, you, I should read out the list of documents? No, I don't think it's necessary. And I don't have any questions. Professor Lulifin, do you think I should read out the list of documents? And do you have any questions? I don't have any questions, and I don't think it's necessary to read out the list of documents. I don't have any questions either, and I don't think we should read out the list of documents. The next item on our agenda is the presentation by the academic degree seeker. No more than 15 minutes, so the floor is given to Tsulu. Dear members of the dissertation board, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm going to share my screen. Can you hear the presentation? Yes, everything is clear. So, I'm beginning my presentation. Dear members of the dissertation board, good afternoon. My research deals with the Russian Far Eastern immigration literature. It's fo it focuses on the reception of Chinese culture and its reception in the poetry of the Russian uh, poetry uh, developed by Russian um, community in China. Russian Far East immigration is a comprehensive phenomenon. Its representatives formed a separate branch of literature created by the Russian communities living abroad. Names of certain writers and poets are not very known. The object of the study is a collection of poets and or rather a collection of poetry written by Russian Far East immigrants. I also made use of the periodicals published in 1920s and 1950s and I worked in the archives in order to get uh, acquainted myself with the documents. So the focus of the research is the so-called Chinese text. The research is relevant because right now the reception of Chinese culture by Russian community in China, or rather poets of the Russian immigration, has not been studied. And moreover, many poets are not still well known. They are Mart Yankovsky, Sherbakov, and so on. Unfortunately, we... Please continue. The studies of the literature of the Far East immigration is therefore relevant. Moreover, there is no comprehensive study of the of Far East immigration poetry. Our research is also has an element of novelty, since this is the first attempt attempt to study the so-called Chinese text and 
its connection with the immigration myth. I believe that unlike the national myth, a new type of uh, containing cultural identity is being formed there, the so-called immigration myth. This allows us we need a third technical break. That is the end of the third uh, technical break. Please continue with your presentation. And this myth contains such mythologies as that of space and chaos. At the same time, the poetic model is based on controversies such as Russia in China, Owen and Alien, myself and somebody else. Moreover, there's the so-called transition plot and transition motive in the poetry because immigration poets were existing uh, on the crossroads of different cultures. At the same time, I also made use of the transnational theory, which is not limited to the narrative and conscious reception of an alien culture. The mythology of, methodology of the thesis is based on a cultural typological method. Uh, technical break number four.
that is the end of technical break number four. Uh, please continue your presentation. Uh, such methods were used as comparative studies, semiotic, thematic, and historical literal analysis. I believe that the works on semiotic analysis of mythopological codes in the text and text mythopoetics by such scholars as Lotman, Melitsky, Mintz are also relative to our dissertation. The first chapter deals with the unit of texts which allows us to identify the so-called Habin myth. It's a myth about the reconstruction of pre-revolutionary Russia in a Chinese city. And St. Petersburg myth here is the ontological model which allows us to create some elements of immigrant perception. And therefore, immigrant poets create the so-called Harbin text in their poets. Here we see the dominance of Russian cultural codes and uh, immigrants mostly ignored um, some aspects of the alien world. We also identified that since 1920s the Far East community tried to reassess um, their attitude and try to find a bridge between the West and the East. Therefore, we see the reassessment in their poetry and we see the myth about the revival of China and Asia. The second chapter of the dissertation deals with different approaches to spiritual values. Immigrant poets regard the naturalness as part of the Chinese text. We see a transition from visual perception of uh, alien beauty to search for the root of life. Moreover, we see that they write about the possibility of going back home and also about uh, settling uh, in the foreign country. Uh, Mart, for example, also writes about different religious aspects. Uh, Yankovskaya writes about the unity of man and nature. The third chapter of the dissertation deals with the reception of the spiritual oriental culture in the Chinese text. Pirilation, for example, focuses on specific objects and on specific forms in his poems. Uh, he also was a translator and therefore in his creative works we see different new approaches to, to poetry. Objects of Chinese culture become alive, become animate objects in his poetry and his poetry can be interpreted from the aesthetic and metaphysical point of view. In Perilation's poets, uh, the ancient world of China is in contrast to Harbin myth. Moreover, we see that 
his research works, or, or rather his literary works, are different from those of other immigrant poets. We came to the following conclusions. The research findings are as following. The immigrant poetry shows us the reflection of uh, Russian poets. It was important for them to describe the Chinese myth. The Chinese text underwent some transformations in the poetry of Russian immigrants. In their poems, we see connection with the past, with the religious aspect, and with the myth. They also develop the traditions of uh, Russian classical literature in their poetry. There are also some controversies in their poetry. For example, we can see such um, controversies as West and East, death, immortality, and so on. Uh, we also were able to find that the Chinese text contained some universal values as well. And they also try to interpret Oriental culture in terms of uh, Western civilization. Moreover, I would like to highlight that the Chinese text itself is a spiritual reflection uh, of the alien culture in their, in their poetry. It helps them to develop the immigrant myth and to transform their picture of the world. Thank you. Are there any questions? To the degree seeker? I have a question. I know that you write about poetry in your dissertation, but I would like to ask you a question. Unfortunately, I cannot hear you. Sometimes the sound isn't clear. Can you hear me? Can you see me? I would like to ask a short question. Did you study only poetry or did you study other genres? I studied also their memoirs and different other types of genres. And in other genres, we see the mythology, the mythologization of Habib as well. And what is interesting about here is that Perilation's memoirs create a specific myth. He tries to create his own myth. He was rather the first poet which uh, who dealt with uh, Russian literature 
and who made it familiar to Chinese readers. There are also some assessments, some evaluations in his memoirs. They are not always objective, but I believe his memoirs are very interesting. Thank you very much. So, Tsulu, thank you. Are there any other questions? There are no questions. The next point on our agenda is the reviews of the dissertation board. Uh, please read out uh, your reviews and ask your questions. The degree seeker can ask questions after each um, review or after all the reviews have been read out, I suggest that the degree seeker provides answers after each review. Are there any objections? We have not received any external reviews. Therefore, we can move on to the presentations by the members of the dissertation board. Since all the reviews are published on the official website of St. Petersburg State University, I suggest that you focus only on the questions and comments. Are there any objections? No objections. I give the floor to Professor Bugaiva. Dear colleagues, I would like to say that the dissertation is really interesting. The degree seeker has come up with very interesting and important research findings. The third chapter deals with perilations of poetry and she gives an original interpretation of Buddhism by Vladimir Solovyov. Moreover, the analysis is very deep and insightful. However, there are some debatable issues in the dissertation which I would like to talk about. So Tsulu writes, the, the following thing. Uh, Habin became part of the new mythological paradigm. However, uh, the, um, the paradigm of island, which is mentioned in the dissertation, is a universal mythology. The closed uh, space is either is a reference to the homeland or a reference to some new um, habitat. In this case, what I find interesting is the combination of the mythology of the island and that of the oasis. And this is a reference to the writer's diaries by Dostoevsky. I would like to clarify if the island, the mythology of island you're writing about is unique. Moreover, the image of a Chinese person and of a person who smokes opium could be borrowed uh, by Russian poets from a st stereotypical uh, from a st stereotype which was uh, characteristic of uh, Western literature. Moreover, Tsulu doesn't make a vivid connection between the Chinese text and St. Petersburg text. Uh, while writing about Perilation's um, works, she doesn't provide a an in-depth analysis of Buddhism interpreted by Vladimir Solovyov, which is d 
different from uh, Buddhism as it is understood in China. Moreover, some aspects are more difficult or rather more comprehensive than you write about, namely the opposition um, of some aspects you are writing. However, I believe that uh, this is a complete and original research work. And it complies with the major requirements set forth in the relevant order. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tsulu, uh, please answer the questions. Tsulu, we cannot hear you. Uh, can you hear me? I would like to thank uh, Professor Bugaiva uh, for her review. I would like to say that I agree with, with you in that uh, there's a stereotypical image of a Chinese person smoking uh, opium. However, I believe uh, this is also the result of the observation of uh, everyday routine of Chinese people. Moreover, open smoking is important uh, to show the situation when somebody is on the border between death and life. And it also shows the spiritual force that is necessary to overcome the existential crisis. Uh, when it comes to the combination of the island and oasis, I'm talking about the preservation of the Russian element. The Chinese railway road was the last oasis in the desert, uh, which was free of many turmoils. And in this case, Habin was regarded as a victory over the chaos or the victory of the Russian force over the chaos. And Oasis here has the Russian element in it. I would like to say that the reference to Dostoevsky here is extremely important, the one you have mentioned. And the my mythology of Ireland is also important. For example, there was a poem, The Island, published in 1940s by the Shanghai uh, Society of, of Poets. However, I would like also to say that the constituent elements of the Chinese texts were studied by uh, Professor Zharikova. Uh, her paper is entitled Oriental Motives in the Poetry of at the Russian immigration in the Far East. And we see here a set of elements, and it has a semantic nuclear. Another interesting thing here is that the reception of Chinese culture went through visual reception to imminent living there. 
this is of course connected with the social and psychological processes with cultural and historical memory that is why we analyze the Habin or St. Petersburg text in the first chapter. When it comes to Buddhism, I believe that Solovyov, Solovyov's interpretation of Buddhism is extremely important. However, Buddhism focuses on oppositions, and Buddhism itself doesn't play a very important role right now. And Solovyov had its his own interpretation of Buddhism. For example, it deals with the source of evil and so on, and this approach allows immigrants to accept uh, some disadvantages, quote unquote, of uh, their lives in um, immigration. There's also an opposition between Pirilishin and German monarch, and this is a characteristic of his early poetry. However, we see a different image in his later poetry, which combines spiritual and erotic elements. So Buddhists and Christianity complement each other from his point of view. You also mentioned that that this is an important issue in the dissertation. And there are th three uh, important teachings in China, Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. And some oppositions are relevant for all three teachings. And uh, these teachings reflect uh, the worldview of the Chinese people. Thank you. Professor Bogaeva, are you satisfied with the answer? Yes, I'm satisfied with the answer. Now I give the floor to the next member of the dissertation board. I give the floor to Professor Luli Feng. So the dissertation by Tsulu reflects, um, or, or rather deals with the reflection of Chinese culture in the poetry of Russian Far Eastern immigration. It consists of the introduction, three chapters, conclusion, and reference list. The dissertation focuses not only on literary studies, but also on comparative studies and cultural studies, as well as sociology and philosophy. The structure of the dissertation is uh, well developed. 
and I would like that to say that the degree seeker provides an in-depth analysis of a number of poems. The dissertation is well written and logically structured. The degree seeker has a good skills uh, in writing uh, research papers. The dissertation provides an in-depth and consistent analysis of Russian Far Eastern immigration poetry. in 1920s, 1950s, and she also focuses on the text producing strategies. She also focuses on the images that we see uh, in the poets and also on the forms. We also see some oppositions in the poets, such as uh, own alien, uh, death, immortality, the past and the present. She also shows the alienation of the culture and the appropriation of the culture as well. However, the research is not limited by the Chinese uh, theme. And she provides an in-depth analysis of the reflection of Russian culture in the poetry. However, there are some um, disadvantages in the dissertation. Some titles in the dissertation are really, really long. I believe that the titles of some, uh, of some sections of the dissertation could have been much shorter. since the titles of this of some sections are quite wordy and this also refers to some subsections and sometimes the word problem should be substituted with the word opposition or changes depending on the contents of this subsection Moreover, I believe you could have given a more in-depth analysis of how Russian immigration poetry reflects Chinese culture. But in general, the dissertation of Tsui Lu, Chinese culture assimilation and its reflection in the poetry of Russian Far East and immigration, 1920s, 1950s, complies with the major requirements set forth in Order 6821-1 as of the 1st of September on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. <laughs> And the degree seeker Tsulu can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology scientific speciality 10.0101 Russian literature. So I have only one question. How is Chinese culture reflected? in Russian Far Eastern immigration 1920s, 1950s. That would be all. Thank you very much. Please answer the question. Professor Lu, thank you. The first chapter deals with the creation of an immigration myth. I believe that uh, the word transition uh, is not quite appropriate for the titles you have mentioned. And I would like to say that
that immigration myth plays an important role in uh, the poetry. And moreover, we see the dialogue of Western and Oriental cultures here. I would like to focus on some issues. First of all, there are some burrowings of the elements of Chinese culture. Sometimes I would like to say that they try to find some common ground between the Russian culture and the Chinese culture. Moreover, I would like to say that there was also a, an element of assimilation and appropriation of uh, cultural traditions. And here, what is important is the mythology, and the philosophy, the tradition, and the everyday lives. The next item is Perilation's poetry, or Baturin's poetry, or Svetrov's poetry. These poets are fluent in Chinese, and there we see a harmonious combination of Oriental and Western elements. There we see the Chinese images, the Chinese style in general. This allows to come up with the language which allows the poets to reflect the, transi the aesthetics of transitional literature. Thank you. Professor Lu, are you satisfied with the answers? Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Professor Barst. As far as I know, my review is published on the official website, so I would like to focus only on the most relevant parts of my review. First of all, I would like to say that the appearance of this dissertation is remarkable. I believe we need more similar dissertations because the dissertation combines uh, literary studies, uh, cultural studies, and the degree seeker shows that she is able to take into account all the factors that had an impact on the poetry. Moreover, she focuses on a number of poets without taking into account of why they immigrated to China. There are political immigrants and employees of trade missions, so they came to China for different reasons. 
but all of them wrote literary works and I believe this approach is justified. Despite the language barrier between our countries, this barrier can be overcome. It is overcome by the degree seeker and this barrier was overcome by the Russian poets as well. And I believe this is an important element of the dissertation. I believe that there are some stylistic inaccuracies, but this is uh, because uh, it is written on a foreign language. I would like to say that uh, you make use of uh, very important theoretical works, um, namely such as Lotman and many others. And this is a, a very big advantage of this dissertation. I would like to say I'm satisfied with the structure of the dissertation. It is logically structured and well written. Uh, you focus on some aspects in more detail and you uh, do not write in detail about some aspects, but this happens in many dissertations. So in general, the dissertation is very interesting and very informative. The analysis is very convincing. And I do not have any, do not see any disadvantages here. So, I believe the dissertation is logical. You made presentations at a number of international conferences and you, you have published a number of papers. Therefore, I believe that this is a complete research and I would like to say that the dissertation complies with the major requirements set forth in the relevant order. Sulu can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. Thank you. So I believe there are no questions in your review, but you still you can make comments about the review. Thank you very much for your review. In your dissertation, you write that I do not focus on some aspects. For example, I do not focus on Sherbakov's works, but as far as I know, it, uh, these works have not been thoroughly studied. Uh, 
And I believe that Shcherbakov's poets are quite interesting, and uh, he is still a marginal writer. Thank you. Are you satisfied with the comment? Yes, I'm satisfied. I now I give the floor to Natalia Grikalova. My review is published on the official website. So I'm going to focus only on the most important issues of my review. I believe that the topic is relevant. And this is the topic is relevant for a number of reasons. Since 1980s, we have seen that the Russian emigration poetry has been has become part of the scientific discourse. Vladivostok University and different other regional uh, establishments played a role in this process. However, I would like to say that the dissertation is very valuable. And I would like to say that the material is analyzed from the point of view from 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 the point of view of someone who is part of Chinese culture. So she focuses on a person in an alien culture. She focused on the fact that they were dealing with the unfamiliar experience. They probably lived in the Far East. I believe that it was necessary for them to live there and to adjust uh, to the new culture. And I believe that the degree seeker is right in that the that everyday culture and ancient culture have their impacts on the immigration poets. Moreover, they had to appropriate this culture. Oriental culture has this aesthetic element. For example, the element of the landscape, and Sulu mentions this. There were these oppositions which are reflected in the poetry, and this is well described in the dissertation. Next, I would like to say that theoretical works dealing with cultural reception usually deal with Perilations and Nesmelov's works. Of course, we must say that works by Evgenia Yashnova and Vsevolod Ivanov's literary works are also being studied. These are quite famous people, and Tsui Lu provides an in-depth analysis of the literary works of ten poets. Some of them are still on the margins, and therefore I believe that the dissertation is novel. Suilu also makes use of important collections of poets, of po 
poems, but she also makes use of uh, sources which are not well known. For example, some collections of poems that were published in China, or she also makes use of periodicals that were published in China. Many of them are a rarity, and I believe that this is a big advantage uh, of this dissertation. A colleague of mine has also mentioned the fact that Sir Lou is well read and she uses a number of methods in her dissertation. She makes use of theoretical works in her dissertation and the author of the dissertation should be credited for it. Well, there is a comparison of Harbin text and St. Petersburg text. Sulu emphasized this aspect of her dissertation in the presentation. And I would like to say the following thing. When I was working in South Korea, I had to visit a literary museum of a very famous Korean writer. I forget his name. And in this museum, there was an exhibition, Russian Harbin. That was a very interesting exhibition, I believe. But the more important thing was the following. This South Korean writer was oriented towards Western Europe, but in those times, in 1920s and 1930s, he couldn't travel to Europe. Uh, therefore, he went to Russian Harbin in order to get this Western experience. There he could see different Russian words, the names of hotels and so on. And this everyday routine namely the Russian everyday routine was similar in his opinion to Western culture. That's an interesting transfer that I would like to talk about. And today, due to your work, uh, I recall this incident. So you write about the theory of cultural transfer in your dissertation, and I believe that uh, the example I have given you proves this existence of parallels between the uh, between St. Petersburg text and Harbin text. The first uh, chapter focuses on Harbin text, and I believe it a very interesting chapter, but probably the title of the section is too wordy. But we should keep in mind that the author of the dissertation is not a native speaker of Russian. I have spoken about uh, landscape, spatial landscape.
However, I have a number of mm, questions. Are you familiar with the Chinese literary scholars that wrote? That write? And are their approaches similar to those of Russian scholars? I believe that you could have made parallels between Oriental and Western communities. This is important to identify the specific features of uh, Russian immigration poetry. Are there any common grounds between the Chinese text and the Paris text of Russian immigrants? Or are they completely different and there are no common grounds between them? Is there existential common ground between Habin myth and the cultural mythology which was characteristic for Russian immigration in Europe? These are my questions. There are some elaborate and wordy uh, syntactic constructions. However, I would like to say that the degree seeker has a good command of the Russian language. The dissertation of Tsulu complies with the major requirements. She is familiar with literary texts and she was able to come up with interesting outcomes and to find ways for further research. She has also published a number of papers in uh, journals recommended by the Russian Minister of Education. Therefore, I believe that the dissertation Chinese Culture Assimilation and its Reflections in the Poetry of Russian Far Eastern Immigration, 1920s and 1950s, and so Lu can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. Thank you. So Lu, please answer the questions. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to uh, clarify some points of my research. In 1990s, Professor Tiausha made some research into the Russian poetry and into the Russian literature. His uh, research is very important for Russian literary studies. I would like that at first uh, the discourse was more about the cultural appropriation in uh, immigration and there was also a interaction between the Russian community and other communities in 19 in 20 in the 21st century we see a, a new a renewed interest uh, to literary processes in the Russian community in China. Therefore, such researchers as Li Nan, Miao Huyan, and Sui Li Wei uh, made their contribution into literary studies. Moreover, most immigrants did not understand uh, the Chinese language. Therefore, it had an impact on their literary works. 
And I would like to mention uh, research papers by Junze and Lu Saoli, which emphasize that um, Russian works, works with Russian immigrants were similar to uh, works by Chinese writers uh, written in the context of uh, Chinese occupation and uh, Pan-Asianism. Moreover, I would like to say that um, reference to the past and uh, an attempt to retain Russian culture is characteristic of different Russian communities. Uh, the Paris text is connected with the, um, European culture and with modernist discourse, while in Oriental culture we see a different image. Uh, there in that poetry we see a lot of everyday images. And I believe that Russian immigrants had a more liberal attitude to the East. Even when uh, it comes to the Buddhist texts, the intonation of Far Eastern immigrants shows that it was easier for them to accept uh, the alien way of life and their own destiny. They also focus on the so-called enlightenment in their poems. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you satisfied with the answers? Yes, I am very well satisfied with the answers. Now we can move to the next item on our agenda. This is my review. Uh, it is published on the website, so I would like to focus on all the most relevant parts. I believe that the dissertation deals with a very important topic, the analysis of poetic heritage in Russian Far Eastern immigration. Only three poets out of ten are well known, therefore I believe that the dissertation is relevant. Tsulu studies more than ten poets, most of which are not well known. She also studies periodicals and collections of poems which are not well known. She is also interested in the Chinese text of the Russian community. And she's also interested in the so-called immigration myth. I believe that she's familiar with many theoretical works. She follows the transcultural approach, which allows her to broaden the scope of her research. I would like to say that in the first chapter she gives a background of Harbin and she comes to the conclusion that history determined the literary works. She also mentions the reference in some poems to the Bronze Horseman, which is very important. She also writes about uh, some interesting events that happened in their lives and which had an impact on the poetry. 
and the attitude of Russian immigrants gradually changed, uh, namely the attitude to Chinese culture. They began to regard it as the cradle of culture. And in the second chapter, she writes that um, Western culture could be regarded as a threat uh, to in Chinese identity. Uh, the third chapter deals with Valery Perilations, poets, and for example, she makes a comparisons with Acmeists and with Nikolai Mgumilov's poets, and I believe that uh, this is quite interesting. She comes to the conclusion that there was a movement from chaos to cosmos to accurate cosmos in their literary works. In general, the dissertation is well written and logically structured. However, it has some, I would like to make some uh, small comments. I should not include some poets of Harbin immigration. For example, she doesn't analyze poems by Leonid Yeshin and his poem The Refugee is extremely important for the dissertation. Moreover, literary works by Alexandra Parkau are also important for Russian immigration literature. These poems or rather these poets are completely unknown. However, this comment could be regarded as, a, as an opportunity for further work. And I would like that there are some um, stylistic and spelling inaccuracies um, in her dissertation. However, the comments do not change the overall positive assessment of the dissertation. So the dissertation by Tsulu complies with the major requirements set forth in order number 6828-1 as of the 1st of September 2016 on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And Tsulu can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology scientific specialty 10101 russian literature please answer the questions thank you very much uh, for your review and for your comments When it comes to such poets as Yeshin and Parkao, I can say that I mention them as representatives of the older generation of far recent immigrants. And in their works, we can find uh, notes which are similar to those of Nismilov. However, I didn't have a chance to analyze uh, the works of, of these poets, therefore I focused uh, on the Chinese text. Uh, what was important for us is the poetic evolution of immigrant and how they overcame st stereotypical uh, reception of uh, the alien culture. But I believe I will study these poets in my further research. Thank you. I'm satisfied with the answers. Is everyone satisfied with the answers to the questions? So I believe that everyone is satisfied.
Now we can continue with our agenda. The next point of our uh, agenda is the presentation of the members of the audience. Uh, we will skip it because nobody is willing to make a presentation. Uh, no questions have been received by email. So we will skip this item on the agenda either. Now I give the floor to the research advisor. So the floor is given to Svetlana Titarenko. very good command of the Russian language. Uh, she studied semiotics and she was interested in such issues as culture and text. And we were able to come with a topic where Tsurlu was able to present herself as a personality and as a researcher. She's really hard working. She analyzed a large scope of material, or rather, a massive scope of material. She had to collect the material to systematize it. She had to come up with an interdisciplinary approach to her research. She studied in libraries, in archives, she studied periodicals and different collections of poems. She was also interested in the methodology. She made use of comparative studies. And she was interested not only in comparative literary studies, but also in comparative studies in general. She was also interested in imagology and cultural transfer. And I believe she did her best uh, to write this dissertation. And this is a complete work. This is a complete research work. She has a good acumen, she has a good scientific acumen, she was very deep, she was very good at providing an insight into Russian culture, Russian philosophy, and she also provides insights into different uh, issues regarding Russian immigration literature. She focuses on the philosophical issues, on the issues of Buddhism, and so on. She also made a number of presentations at international conferences. Her presentations were highly valued. She also taught at the Faculty of Philology and she was very popular with the students. The papers that she published also provide an in-depth analysis and have an element of novelty. So I believe that this is an original research work and I would like to wish her every success and professional growth. Please continue study Russian literature. And thank you.
does anybody else want to say something about the presentation? I would like to say that uh, the degree seeker provides very good answers to the questions. It's a specific skill or it's a specific art, and she provides very copious and informative answers to the questions. She stick uh, to the topic. Her answers were very informative. This is a big advantage, I believe. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or are there any comments? Are there any questions that we received by email? There are no questions received by email. Now we have finished with the discussion. Before the ballot counting and voting, I would like to ask the following questions. Do you have any comments or questions about the procedure of the session of the dissertation council? No questions, no comments, no questions. Thank you. We move on to the next item on our agenda. It's 4.43 p.m. Moscow time. I would like to ask the members of the dissertation board. We can have a technical break in order to d discuss the results of the uh, session. Do you think we need a technical break to discuss the results? Or do you think we can start voting without any technical break? Do we need a technical break? I think everyone has expressed their opinion. I don't need we I don't think we we need any technical breaks. Do you think we need a technical break? I think everyone has expressed their opinion we don't need a technical break. Do we need a technical break? I don't think so. Professor Lufain I don't care. I would like to say that Suilu made a very good presentation. I also believe that we don't need a technical break. So we don't need a technical break. Now we are beginning the open voting on the issue of conferring the academic degree, scientific specialty 10101, Russian literature. Let me remind you that this, the decision of the dissertation board is positive, provided more than 50% of the council members voted in favor. in conformity with section 23 of the order. I will be asking each members of the dissertation council. Uh, Professor Bugaeva, how do you vote? Uh, I think Tsulu should be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. Professor Grikalova, what's your opinion? I believe she should be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. Uh, Professor Barst, what, what's your opinion? I believe the degree seeker should be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. Uh, Professor Lulifin. What's your opinion? I agree with my colleagues. 
Yes. I vote in favor. And I, the member of the dissertation board, also vote for awarding the academic degree to Tsuilu. So five members of the dissertation board have voted in favor of conferring the academic degree. So five people have voted for. Uh, nobody voted against or abstained from voting. So Tsulu has been awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. The next item on our agenda is the closing speech of the degree seeker. I would like to express my gratitude uh, to everyone who participated in the discussion of the dissertation. I would like to thank all members of the dissertation board and also the members of the department for dissertation maintenance. I would like to thank uh, the professors of St. Petersburg State University and I would like to thank uh, Professor Karpov, the, the head of the department. And I would like to thank Professor Manierova, the technical secretary of the dissertation council. I would like to thank the chairperson and the members of the dissertation board for reading my dissertation and for making comments about it. And thank you for the overall positive assessment of the dissertation. And I would like to express my genuine gratitude to my research advisor, Svetlana Titayenko, for her assistance. It was extremely difficult for me to write this dissertation and she always inspired me and supported me. When I uh, was in doubt, she provided her support. I would like to thank her. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to congratulate you on being awarded the academic degree. Congratulations. You have been unanimously awarded the academic degree and we wish you good luck in your research. And in the, uh, teaching Russian uh, and Russian literature. Thank you. This is the end of the session of the dissertation board. Please switch off the broadcast.